Hi, this is Greg Althaus, co-founder and CTO of Reckon. Today we're going to continue talking about digital rebar provision and focus on templates. So in previous sessions we've kind of set up an environment, we got it basically running, and then we started talking about what the content is to run on the provisioner side, how to serve OS's, boot environments, and stuff. This is going to specifically talk about templates, the way we serve dynamic content to drive kickstart files and uh, changing the system as it boots and stuff like that. So we'll start by looking at the documentation. Template is, like we said, how the boot environment um, renders content. The boot environment represents where the file is served from under the, the TFTP boot directory and how it's accessed. The template represents the content. Now templates can represent just direct content or they can represent content that can be rendered in line inside of a template, so template within templates, and these can chain. The templates are um, have access to a set of built-in custom functions or variables, as well as um, additionally parameters that are stored in profiles and on nodes. And we'll kind of talk about those here in a bit. The documentation uh, on Read the Docs has a list of the built-in functions. So how you can get the machine's name, the short name, which is the first part of the fully qualified domain name, its UUID, a path to a custom space for just that machine, its IP address, and then the URL to access that machine space. Then there's various things about accessing the ISOs inside of boot environments um, and where those live. There's boot parameters. That's inside of the defined in the boot environment that's specified. And then some helpers to find the provisioner itself and um, some tools to do things like parsing sections of URLs. Um, we have a security token generator that allows us to generate limited lifetime tokens so that you can do updates to the machine on a time basis that will expire after use, that kind of stuff, as well as the ability to just get arbitrary parameters from our profile space. Um, you specify the key and then that gives you back the value. The, um, and then the final one is the template and template option. These are all kind of described. And then there's some parameters that the kind of existing things already want or want to know about, and we have examples of those. And then there's some default sub-templates that we provide with the digital rebar provision. And each of those are kind of talked about and how to use them and how to build the profile for them. But we'll just go look through a template as an example. So in this case, I have my install directory. I go into the assets directory. And in here, I have some bootims and templates that are available. In this case, if I look at the templates, let's start by looking at, for example, the CentOS 7 kickstart file. As you can see, it's your typical looking kickstart file. In this case, I've got the top part basically filling in and setting up for an install. You can see the template expansion of where am I going to find my install directory. This is the path to the ISO, the exploded ISO from the boot environment. Then you can see we use cases like if I have a proxy server set up, basically I need to go through a proxy to access the internet. Um, this shows how to get values from that, right? I want to take proxy servers as a, a list of structures. It wants to take the first structure, pull out the URL from that structure and use it. Um, there's examples of how this data looks like in the docs and how to build the provisioner. Then we also have the example of using parameters, testing to see if they exist to provide a value, otherwise taking a default. So in this case, this is an example of us setting the default root password. So here's our default value, which is uh, rocket skates, capital R, capital S. Or if the parameter provisioner default password hash is found, it will then inject that in instead of using that way. That way you can customize it and provide it as part of the profiles 
or global profile or the machine specific data. And the same thing continues. Then we build our boot disks, install our packages, and then we have our post install script. In this case, there are a bunch of templates we're including. The templates represent things like, in this case, setting up the host name, um, including proxy support into the operating system, um, if that's available. Um, we have a template that represents pulling in and uh, replacing the internet-based repos with pointing at the provisioner to use its ISO repo. Uh, we have a remote root remote access where we can put some SSH keys in place for that template or into the root so that you can get passwordless access. A alpha version of joining this node into a digital rebar can be done through the that template. And then the update DRP local says update the machine entry to boot local the next time it boots so that I don't end up in an infinite boot cycle. So those templates get included. Now, something to realize when you're building or wanting to use a template inside a template, you need to be aware of where it's going to be used. So these templates are set up to be run as shell scripts inside the post install environment. So if I go look at the uh, Debian based or the um, the preceed file for Debian, we'll see that it looks much similar with the same kind of parameterization. And then we get to the end and we see that it's going to pull this net post install script. So the net post install script is actually where we include the templates. And you can see it looks kind of similar to the post install for the um, kickstart. Just the pre-seed doesn't necessarily let you do it directly online. You need to have a script that you can pull over and easier to manipulate. So this then becomes a rendered file that gets made available. It gets pulled over by the pre-seed file and run as part of its post. So these templates are aware of that. So if then I go look at, for example, the update DRP local, I can see that it's a script that's set up to run. Because it's a script, I can put comments. So the comments kind of describe what it's going to be used for, where it's going to be done. And then I can say, okay, what am I using from variables? So it's going to go use the built-in provisional URL to go find and pull down a DRP client to then execute so that it can then use the API URL right, to know how to talk back to a digital rebar provision generate a one-time use token. That token will only allow the machine to be updated for this specific machine. And then we'll call the machine update command. And in this case, it's going to set the boot environment to next boot env if it's an available as an environment variable or local. So that way you could potentially, if you wanted to, chain a set of installs. You might choose a, to chain a burn-in that then when it completes, chains an install, which then chains a the local boot to say I'm done. So the idea is that those become available and you can drive them that way. But since it's a DRC, DRP CLI command, um, you can, it's available to do other things, but the token currently generated will only support machine update in this case. Okay. Um, so that's kind of templates and what you can do. At that point, you get all sorts of options. So for example, if I look at my root remote access template, it's a little more complex. Um, so it shows how to potentially iterate over a set of objects to generate keys. Um, it also sets up some SSH D parameters. Um, in general, we've tried to make sure that the sub templates have a comment section with them so that you can see how it's used, where it should be used, and what variables are there and then what the YAML format is for the data that it needs to operate on. So the idea is that I could take this key section or this this section here and place it inside of a profile YAML and that becomes available. The CLI is how you can operate with these templates. So there's templates and you can say list the templates and you can get them all. I often like to use JQ to uh, limit some of the fields um, so I can find the IDs, those kind of things. Um, and then 
from the CLI you can do other things into. But we'll talk about that in another video when we get to more direct manipulation of templates. As always, you can go online and look at the documentation and see what parameters and how templates are used. And you can also see on our Digital Rebar Provision channel more videos on how to use templates, when to use them, and when to update them. Hope you found this useful. Look forward to see you next time.